Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second episode of the Tesla series, so if you have not watched the previous video, you should check it. I'll link it below. Before I start with the second part of the Tesla series, I want to thank all of you for your comments and suggestions in my previous videos. Most of them are very incisive and pleasant to read. Many of you guys wanted me to talk about Solar City and the Gigafactory. Some of you also raised questions about Tesla's maintenance costs and whether EVs really save our environment as they claimed. I appreciate all of that. Just want you guys to know that I do make hard decisions making these videos because there are a lot of things I want to mention yet I only have a few minutes to talk about it in every video. So stay tuned while I unravel the company that is Tesla. With this said, I'm Lei. Let's get back to our story. Tesla, through years of hard work, has pushed us closer to its end goal, which is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transportation. But researching a little bit more into the auto industry, I quickly realized one big problem. Tesla's market share is really low. Wait, let me, let me rephrase. It's basically non-existent. Total cars delivered in 2016 were around 97 million, while Tesla's total delivery was only 76,000 cars. This is not even a thousandth of the industry's total delivery, even with a very optimistic delivery projection of 500,000 next year and 1 million the year after, Tesla will still only take up 1% of the market share. So how is it going to accelerate the advent of sustainable transportation and lead us eventually to point B? Let me explain with the following factors. First of all, the way EV works makes it a fundamentally different car. I mentioned a little bit about it in my previous video, so again check it out, I'll link it below. Nevertheless, let me give you guys an idea of how Tesla operates differently compared to its gasoline counterparts. For a Tesla, it draws its energy from the battery pack located at the chassis of the car. The direct current drawn from the battery pack is then converted to three-phase alternating current by an inverter and transferred to the induction motor. I don't want to go into the specifics, but basically, with the alternating current, the induction motor is able to create the motion needed to turn the drive wheel. As you can see, everything is controlled with electricity and because of that, changes can be made instantly with software. However, gasoline engine works in a much more inefficient manner. Inside the engine, there are pistons firing in linear motion which needs to be converted to rotary motion and then a complex transmission system is still required to control the speed of the car. However, in a Tesla, a speed-varying transmission system is not required because it can be efficiently altered by changing the input frequency with the inverter alone. Again, this is controlled by software, hence it is instant and responsive unlike the gasoline car. Because of the differences I've explained so far, electric vehicles has far superior performance than a gasoline car. But you might want to ask, Lei, why do you show me this engineering stuff? You already told us in the previous episode that EVs are better. The reason is that I want to show you guys the change from a gasoline car to an electric vehicle is not an incremental change. It is a fundamental paradigm shift. Meaning that comparing electric vehicles with gasoline cars is nothing like comparing an iPhone 8 with the Samsung Galaxy S8. It's more like comparing the original iPhone to the Nokia in 2008. They operate based on two sets of entirely different principles. Shown in the graph is the S-curve that represents technological shifts. The existing technology curve represents gas cars and the new technology curve represents Tesla. Basically what happens is that as old technology matures, it makes improvements that are less and less significant in terms of the performance and eventually plateaus. However, for new technology, its performance will stay below that of the existing technology for a long time. But when several fundamental problems were solved, its performance goes up very quickly and overtakes the old technology. I agree with many of you guys that Tesla has its own problems, but I do believe that at this stage, the transition is already inevitable and would eventually lead to a completely sustainable future for transportation with electric vehicles. Policymakers all around the world agree with me too. The second factor that's helping Tesla to achieve its end goal is its commitment in vertical integration. To understand this, I need to explain first the value chain of the auto industry. It's a complex system, so bear with me. 
First of all, there are the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers. In the context of the auto industry, these are the big auto companies like General Motors or Ford. Then there are suppliers. Under this level, there are tier 1 suppliers like Bosch and Continental that sells part of the car directly to OEMs. There are also tier 2 suppliers like Nvidia and Intel. They do not directly sell to OEMs, but their parts usually wind up in cars. Below the OEMs are the sales and retail channels like the American dealership centers. Furthermore, there are also infrastructures like the network of gas stations in the downstream and the software companies in the upstream that produces software for connected cars. All of this makes up the complete map of the value chain. However, what differentiates Tesla from its competitors is the way it organizes its value chain. Tesla chooses to have total control over it, while its competitors choose to outsource most of the work. A research done by Chang showed that while traditional OEMs have 25% vertical integration, Tesla has around 80%. As shown in the screen, blue box means outsourcing from suppliers, green box means joint venture, and yellow means vertical integration. It's not hard to see that Tesla almost controls all of its value chain while the traditional OEMs choose to outsource the components to the suppliers. Furthermore, since the research is done in 2015, the only blue box for Tesla is now changed to green due to the new Gigafactory. In the context of America, the sales box should be changed to blue for conventional cars as it's controlled by local dealers rather than the car company. The only exception is Tesla, maintaining full control over its sales channels. The most important benefit to vertical integration is high quality. In the auto industry where you have thousands of components for the engine alone, traditional OEMs choose to hire suppliers to make most components of the car or produce the core component in-house. The main rationale of this is to achieve economies of skills and hence pay lower price for components. However, this causes a lot of quality issues. For example, Toyota famously outsourced 80% of its components and in the past few years, it has experienced several product recalls because of quality issues. This not only reflects badly on the quality of their products, it's also very costly. One research shows that, across the board, there are statistically significant increases in the failure rate for firms that don't consider transaction costs in their outsourcing decisions and suggests that firms need to look beyond production costs to other costs such as poor quality, delivery delays, and risk of price increases by suppliers. The second benefit of vertical integration is to capture more value along the value chain. For example, American car dealership usually takes up 5-15% to of the value along the value chain. So if Tesla could manage its sales well, this part of the value would be captured by Tesla too. Tesla's investment in upstream battery production and the downstream charging services adds to this point too. Lastly, according to a report from PwC, many of the new features going into cars require the expertise of software engineers, who by and large prefer the ostensibly more dynamic work environments in Silicon Valley startups to those of the automotive industry. This is another part of vertical integration captured by Tesla. Tesla has great software teams making software for them. This ensures the quality of the software and at the same time captures this part of the value along the value chain. Most importantly, this also shows the new consumer preference of smart vehicle, which favors the young company, Tesla. In conclusion, I think a complete sustainable transportation is already inevitable. If I were to choose one thing that delays this from happening, I would say probably us. I mean, not exactly us. Most of you guys watching my video know what's going on, but people around us, those who are still skeptical about this future. Because the earlier we embrace this new norm, the better for our planet. All right, thank you all for watching. Sorry this episode has been a little bit more technical than I expected, but I think a deeper understanding of Tesla does give us a clearer picture for our future. Nevertheless, Stay tuned for the next episode where I dive deeper into the energy side of transportation. Hopefully I can make it shorter, funner, and faster. Again, I'm Lei. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.